Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 22 of this Let's Multiplay Hearts of Iron 4, the Communist Co-op. I'm joined here by Tin Tuna. Hello. Who is playing as? People's Republic of China. Marvellous. And I am playing as? Soviet Union. There you go. Yeah. And we are still fighting people. Now, one of the things that we were kind of doing between episodes here is talking about uh, the strengths of the different nations. So we do our own alliance, which is the Soviet Union, People's Republic of China, plus relative um, puppets. Then we are fighting against the United Kingdom, who kind of standing alone at this point. Most of their little allies are pretty much dead, including, most amusingly, Canada, which has now been absorbed by the USA. And Canada is relegated to this tiny little island up here, north of Labrador. And this little island over here, which is in fact their capital now, so that's kind of funny. Uh, most of South America is still guaranteed by the US, aren't they? All of all of the Americas are guaranteed by the US, yeah. So they are. Even Venezuela. Even Venezuela. Every single country, yep. Yeah. It's one of the um, things that they get. Except Venezuela are sending <laughs> volunteers to the other side. Are they? Yeah. Rude. <laughs> um, and of course the UK is at war with the French Entente. Yeah, the French Entente being led by the French and the USA, hence Britain's lost Canada. In fact, the only big boys left on the UK side would be what South Africa, Australia, New Zealand. Yes. And, you know, You'd struggle to call those big boys, really. They're just kind of... Yeah, I say that with a uh, slightly mocking voice. <laughs> um, exactly. And we have been kind of thinking about attacking at some point. Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely kick that off at some point. You know, I've got French territories over my direction that I want to take. But I've still got, you know, parts of the United Kingdom in Borneo. I've got... Uh, Lots of the Netherlands to eat. Australia. Oh, why is that turned on? Um, who controls the Philippines? Oh, they're allied with the, the French. Yeah. Yes. So, um, so I won't take them just yet. But yeah, I mean, we've got you've got things to eat as well, haven't you? Before. Right. I was doing all the uh, excavation techs. I think I might want to continue those, except I can't. More construction, definitely. And the other thing that I have been doing between episodes is actually looking at how air battles work in a bit more detail. So my current setup here in this area is actually pretty poor. So I have poor range at the moment because my aircraft are just too far behind. And also here, so I need to move those a bit closer forwards. And also radar coverage up here. Um, radar is extremely useful and I hadn't realized quite how important it is. Uh, basically, when you have a fully filled air zone of 2,000 aircraft, you have a 10% chance of finding enemy aircraft in that area. If you have a radar thing there, it goes up to 80% chance. So it's actually a really, really big deal to have those extra radar installations in the area. So the very first thing I'm going to do is build a whole bunch of radar. I think that is a gonna... massive, that is a massive, massive jump, isn't it? Yeah, it's huge. So I'm basically just going to surround my coast with radar. And also it gives you information about inland stuff, so you want it everywhere. Yeah, that's really cool. Well, I actually don't even have the technology to build it, so I'm not going to do that just yet. Oh well. But maybe one day. <laughs> one day, maybe. I dream. I'm going to have... Um, I'm going to have jet fighters before I have radar. <laughs> I have a dream. Yeah. One day, we will have radar. <laughs> no. I'm just surrounding my entire coastline with radar. Just so I can get the early warning detection against incoming attacks. And then a couple of more inland things, particularly where I'm expecting to be doing a lot of fighting. So I should probably put some more there. Maybe even surround... Uh, People's Republic of China with some. You never know. That's never going to be a good idea. <laughs> what, are you going to destroy my radar installations? Not very nice. I, I would swat your puny threats. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, the other <laughs> thing about 
air, air, no, air superiority. See, they are now, in fact, trying to wrestle control back here. So we have 263 versus their 225. So they're actually throwing quite a few planes at me and doing it far more efficiently. Like, I have these 900 planes, but because their coverage is so poor, I'm getting horrible penalties at the moment. So I need to move these guys in particular closer. If I remember right, I have a base around here somewhere. Yes? No? Maybe? Uh, apparently not. Oh, there's one. 600 planes. So you can move here. And you should continue doing your mission automatically. And then back onto here. Need to move you somewhere a bit closer as well. I have sworn I had an airbase in this area. There where I do. Massive capacity. Okay. So now we are at yellow readiness. That's mostly because of range to cover that area. And I am fighting almost entirely fighters. So we're going to do just air superiority over here. See our uh, air superiority power has now jumped up from 200 and something to 899 without actually adding extra planes. That's just doing it more efficiently. It makes a huge difference. And if we actually wanted to tackle air power over someone else's land, because they get big bonuses if they're fighting over their own territory, basically because they can uh, refuel and rearm much, much more quickly than you can, you really want to do that with heavy fighters, because they have the extra range. And you can see the range penalties I'm having here, and this is adjacent to my own territory, that if I was flying over to the UK, I would suffer humongous range penalties. So you want to use heavy fighters, because they have that bit of extra oomph. So speaking of heavy fighters... I think we should start researching them. It's good to know. I still have another tech slot. Jeez. Do I see another industry one? No. Oh, yeah. And I have huge oil shortages, too. I'm going to yes. start researching synthetic oil. I'm, um, I'm just jumping into the Netherlands holdings in Indonesia, which have not the most oil on the planet, but yeah, a reasonable amount. Enough to float your industry. Yeah. I keep on forgetting that Sweden have actually landed in my land, so let's divert this army to go and root them out. Let's make sure you're all assigned to that. And then we'll rename you Sweden, because that's where you are now fighting. Seeing as you've done your job in Iran. Right, what was the other thing I was going to do? Might have been thinking a bit about this type of stuff between the episodes. Right, constructions. I actually need to move the raid bar stuff to the top. So we'll do this in reverse order. Is that the ones I select the last, which are the ones right on the coast that I actually need the radar coverage will be done first? Like so. Let's drop these guys down. Because so I also want to continue building up my navy. The other thing I can do with the navy stuff is reprioritize. Because up till now, just for kind of organizational purposes, I've had ships at the here at the bottom of the list. And this means that they get last dibs on all of the resources. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send them to the top of the list. And then suddenly, they get a lot more resources. And we actually get a decent rate of construction now. I think I'm going to do the super heavies at the very top. Followed by the heavies. Come on. And then the destroyer. And once we hit 300 convoys, I'll stop building convoys and dedicate more to destroyers. And I can modify government, and I should do that. <coughs> Extensive construction. That sounds like a good idea. So we've gone from 800,000 manpower to 4 million. Marvellous. Nice. Yeah, not too bad. Oh, I've got my heavy fighter already. Nice. <laughs> that was super quick. Um, do I want more? Yeah, I think I probably do. And the other thing... Actually, how are we doing for range? We're still a bit short. The aircraft based in Holland are actually getting there. Looks like airbase. That airbase is huge. You know what? Let's move them all to Holland. Is that helping? 
No, you're a different model, that's why. You're a different model. You're the most modern. The lag mark one is my most modern. So what I'm using here. Uh, nope. Yes. So these ones need upgrading. I assume that does happen. How are we doing shooting down? We've lost 12 fighters to the 8. So we are losing the air battle, but I think we're just throwing enough planes at them that we're winning. I think we're going to have to just massively increase the air capacity here in the Netherlands. So that's another little thing I need to build. More air bases. Ooh, your capacity is already pretty much full. Maybe some more over there. Okay. And we'll do the repairs last. I mean, the repairs that you do have in your list will be done. They just take a bit longer because you're not dedicating industry. But there is kind of a base repair rate which occurs over time. Is there? I didn't yeah, know there that. There is. Like repairs one hit point a day or something. Oh. Don't quote me on those numbers, I don't know exactly. Okay, so that army is on their way in. They'll be using supplies. Do we control the sea here? Not really. Do I have submarines? I do have submarines. Hello, submarines. Let's have you all merge together. Let's have you. Convoy raiding. Oops, wrong button. Baltic subs, convoy rating. Baltic. Good. Why am I losing submarines in the English channel? That shouldn't be happening. That's really weird, I have no idea why I'm losing subs there. And there is a... Potential invasion of Finland, but I don't think they'll have much luck getting there. My other army that was based in Iran can now line up for an attack on Iraq, so I get even more oil. And we'll just join the other army in doing that. What army is that? Oh, it's my tanks, that's where they are. Okay. I'll call you Iraq. So what are you up to? I am just prepping my invasions of the Netherlands holding in Indonesia. Aha! Yeah, I'm sorting out some supply problems while I do it, because I'm kind of clustering people around. Um, but other than that, not a lot. Kind of building a lot of mechanized, building a lot of tanks. Good stuff. Oh, speaking of mechanized, I've been building those too. How many do I have? 895. Where's my tank division? What would it cost to start switching my tanks from motorized to mechanized? Requires 50 per division. I currently have 32 divisions, which would require 1,600 to change out just one of the divisions of the four that is in... Sorry, one company of the four that I currently use. I need another 1,600 mechanized to up uh, in my upgrade list. I've got 100,000 infantry equipment needing upgrading. Crikey. Yeah. Um, you know that when you selecting what... So if you have like light tanks in your tank division you decide to go medium tanks. Now if you actually make that change it appears on the right hand side under equipment cost in the division designer thing oh, and if cool. you hover over the equipment cost thing so in this case 
mechanized because I'm switching motorized to mecha mechanized. It tells you how many divisions you have and how many mechanized you would need to make that change. Yeah, that's good. So I'm currently 680 short to make the change, so there's not really much point. Otherwise, that motorized division will be fighting on half strength when it becomes mechanized. You guys arrived yet? Pretty much. That's you. No, you're the purple. What are you, Sion? You're Sion. I have two. What? I have two Swedish divisions up here. Why do I have two Swedish divisions? I just found an extra army I didn't even know I had. <laughs> With my level 6 commander. Well, in that case, make this your front and prepare an invasion of Sweden. <laughs> Come on, just get two whole armies going after that little blip. Yes, we sank five British convoys. Submarines are doing their jobs. Yay. Are you all? No, you're not. You should be going to Baltic subs. So should you. Everyone else to Baltic fleet, because I'm just centralizing my fleet. Marvellous. How's the air battle? It's green. Okay. <laughs> oh, the other thing I'll do is switch these out. doing a land doctrine before, wasn't I? I just kind of skipped that one through. I was. I think I should probably continue. Oh yeah, more Moken. Motorized and mechanized bonuses. That's timely. Free dockyards. Oh, and I'm over my convoy limit, so we'll stop you, which give me even more dockyards, which means I should start building some more ships. Shall I start another chain of super heavies, or shall I do more destroyers? Go I'll go for more super heavies. Because they cost less steel and cost chromium, and I think I have sufficient chromium for that to be okay. And automatically join the Baltic fleet. Marvellous. Right. There are 3,600 aircraft in the English Channel. That's quite a few. I could start fighting them for control. They have got radar coverage. I do not. Why not? How long is that taking? You are building it. Slowly. What I'm very tempted to do is upgrade my aeroplanes so they get that bit more extra range. Lag Mark 1. 155, I could actually afford that. Do it. And then anywhere that is building aircraft, start building me the Mark IIs. You. Mark II. You. Mark II. You. Mark II. Oh, nice. My submarine sank three Norwegian heavy cruisers. Wow. At a loss of three submarines. That's really good. That is really, really good, yeah. Who's a rock allied with again? They're with the French, aren't they? Yeah. No, they're guaranteed by the French. Yeah, that's it. I knew there was something stopping me doing that invasion. Ten British convoys trying to get to those guys. 
not gonna manage. Construction four. Start on construction five then. And there we go. The Swedish have been kicked out of Sweden. Except for Gotland. I'm actually going to call your army my reserves. And I'm going to garrison you. Like Moscow. <coughs> Meanwhile, Finland still says it's going to be naval invaded, so we are going to do a fallback line. Hang on, have you actually been invaded? You have actually been invaded! Well, therein lies your starting problem. It is not that, that an invasion is going to happen, it has happened. Go and deal with them, please. Philip Golikov. I'll give you some more men as well. In fact, no. Those three tanks. I'm going to the Iraq army because tanks are better in Iraq, or so I've heard. You tried a couple of times. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we are definitely ready to go after them. I'm now just eight steel short, down from like a hundred and something. Yes, eight submarines against five British convoys. You can do this, guys, you can do this. Nope, they've seen us and they're running. Two, three, four, sank. Go on, you can get this last one. There's 13 of you now. My sub fleet is actually building up pretty quickly. Yes, we got all five. No reinforcements for you. And my air force just sank two Swedish subs. Life is good. Ooh, is that radar coverage? I have radar coverage in the... English Channel, but not in the North Sea yet. 3% only, though. I wonder if I can see yours. No. The Greeks want to send me 26 divisions. Okay. <laughs> if you like. <laughs> sure, why not? Why? Are they... Are they with us? They're at war with the Brits. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. They're all green. No, no, they are. They're part of the common zone. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's actually a pretty Even decent though army they've given me here. They're not. Uh, they're not communist. And in that case. Interesting. Assign some of these green infantry units to my garrison force. In fact, I could just assign this whole group to the garrison. That's probably a better plan. There we go. That invasion of Finland has really kicked off. There are a lot of <laughs> British convoys sailing through the Baltic right now, and this is really not a good place to be if you're a British convoy, because you are surrounded on three sides by Soviet territories. Aha! Kamikazes! I can now build kamikazes.
But none of the Russians had kamikaze pilots. Apparently now they do. I guess that was a path the uh, Soviets didn't historically follow. Naval invasion in Benelux. I have quite a few troops out here. What are you lot? My northern defence force. Right, yes, I can switch you around if I need to. Oh, we are still fighting for... Oh, they're sending 600 planes here now. How are we doing? Why am I sodding radar not reaching? Damn it. <coughs> so you're still building. Well, hurry up. You've started to move into the Netherlands. Yeah, check out Naval Invasion 2 just coming up now. Oh, uh -oh. oh yeah, lines everywhere. Oh, you're planning against Australia? Uh, no, not yet. Oh, I'm just seeing your battle plans. I haven't got any battle plans against Australia. Greece does. Uh, interesting. <laughs> and Spain. Wow, okay, that's interesting. Ah, Chinese fleet fighting the Dutch. Yes. You found their submarine fleet. It and is. Good grief, they have a lot of subs. They 13. Like, no, that was one small section. They had like 20 or 30 of them. I think. Benelux, southern Sweden. Baltic Sea, they're all under attack. Except they're not really. And Norwegian fleet has found my subs. Run away, you'll lose. How many ships do I have now? Eight. Two super heavies, one heavy cruiser. No, sorry, one super heavy, one battleship, one heavy cruiser, and a bunch of destroyers. I wonder if that's enough to wrestle control of the Baltic back yet. Probably not quite. Aha! I control the North Sea again. Speaking of controlling, I need to change these. Because otherwise they'll just fight at stupid strength. You don't want to do that. And close air support should operate only in the day. And naval bombers also in the day. It's far more efficient than flying both. Fighters, though, any time. Unless you're doing anti-bomber fighters, in which case you should operate at night, because that's when most of the bombers are active. There you go. Like a font of knowledge. Yeah, I did a lot of reading up about this stuff, because I just did not understand how most of the uh, fighter combat worked. Yeah, planes are, planes are still a mystery to me. I seem to have control of everywhere that I want to have control. Except the North Sea, which keeps on flipping. Oh, as soon as I get radar coverage over that, though. Game over, man. Game over. <laughs> I have an empty airbase. Air of course, I've been building airbases here, haven't I? I want another 600 aeroplane wing here, please. which is going to be fighting for the North Sea. On air superiority, off you go. In fact, you go there, you'll be a bit closer. You going? You. Let's try that again. 
600 aeroplanes. There we go. You deploy there. There we go. Now you're doing it. And I will then have 1,500 aircraft active in that area. Yes, we've shot down 34 for my 30. We're winning! It's going to be the slowest air battle ever, but we're winning. 34 down. How many left? How many do you build per day? Hang on. 34 down. 16,000 to go. Yeah, How many do I build definitely. a day? I build... 181. And you shut down 30. Yeah. And that's with a crippling oil shortage. Yeah. So I think it might take a while. Yes. At these current rates, but once the uh, radar are up, I'll actually be able to catch them. Which will mean more losses for me, because there'll be more air battles going on. But I'm hoping that my industry is a little bit bigger than theirs. Oh, your fleet's not actually that big. I could take it, maybe. You're tier 1. You're going to tell me what tier you are. Tier 2. What are you? Heavy Cruiser 1. Hmm. Oh, so close. We have 9 ships now. Another destroyer. No, not quite. I need to start doing more of these air battles so I can actually start building up some sorry, uh, naval battles so I get some more naval experience. And then I can make more powerful warships. Anyway, that is it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, then please do hit that like button. If you're enjoying it as well, then uh, please do consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't done so yet either. It's goodbye from Tinjuna. See you later. And from me, we'll catch you next time.